Hi, my name is Barry Crompton. Today I'm going to uh, not so much show you around the car because it's uh, lashing down outside. The weather forecast again was for cloud, but it's cloud and awful rain. So um, I'll just tell you a little bit more about it and then I'll take you for a ride in it. It's a two litre TFSI three door. 2007 on a 57 plate, you'd never think so. One owner from new and it's got nine service stamps in the book. The car has done 92,525 miles at the moment, but we'll have done more, obviously, after this uh, test drive. We've just MOT'd it, so it's MOT'd until the 5th of the 8th, 2022. Fuel economy, urban, 26.4 miles per gallon. Extra urban, 47.1 miles per gallon. And combined is 36.7 miles per gallon. Has a 0 to 60 time of 6.6 .6 seconds, a top speed of 149 miles per hour, out of 197 brake horsepower, 16 valve, four cylinder engine. So we've got the uh, Audi Q with a proper blade, no keyless go or anything like that. Proper old fashioned thing. And um, obviously just because uh, people invent new things don't mean to say it's better than the old stuff. Um, and this thing is a prime example. I've had a, another headrest mount which cost me 40 pounds about uh, 20 years ago never let me down uh, and then i just happened to uh, it was it was fine nothing wrong with it at all still work still in the boot and then i happened to see this uh, this mount and uh, as soon as i started reading it, it said made out of aircraft grade aluminium i thought wow i've got to have one anyway i bought it 130 pound and um when I when I uh, rang them up to order it, I got chatting to the guy who seemed very nice, and I, I said because uh, I was thinking about having another camera mounted here, one pointing that way and one pointing that way, which is overkill as you can see for the amount of cameras I've got. But um, I said to him, if I buy two, will you will you give us some discount? And uh, he said, uh, I get loads of people like you. I thought, oh really? <laughs> okay. Uh, he says, if, if I knock you any off, I'd go out of business. Well, well fair enough. So I only bought one. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, the chap did me the biggest favour ever because it's made out of aircraft aluminium. Um, you can't line the screw up on some headrests and it's all it had stripped after about three days. So it's, uh, as I say, I've had the other one 20 years. I had this one three days and it, and it wouldn't work. And also, this bit, there's, there's flex in it and, it and it's difficult to set up. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, is new stuff, new designs are not necessarily better than, than the old designs. And th this Audi TT is a, a classic example. It's a proper sports car. It's got everything in that you need. No, no fancy stuff really. Um, we've, we've got... A, a, a beautiful design when it first came out it was a classic from the moment it was released and it's still a classic today they've, they've managed to keep the same sort of lines the same sort of design the same sort of fun in the car and not killed it with all, all sorts of other rubbish you know and it's one of the, the the few cars in manual that I think possibly drives better than than the automatic or you, you certainly perhaps get more enjoyment. And, and I really like automatic, so honestly, that, that's a lot coming from me. It's such a fantastic design. And as I say, I remember the first one, I had one of the first ones, and there was a, a flat that came down with Audi TT and it covered the radio. And, I, I, and I, I wished it would do the same today because it looks like an old classic sports car then inside. It's proper switches. Everything is just nice. I think the, the only thing I can think of that would improve this car is if this aluminium bit just had the slots in for the uh, for the gears, just you know, like the old sort of Ferraris. So anyway, um, I'll tell. Uh, so, ah, what for done with it? So, it's, ooh. so it's one owner from new. Big dint in the back of my head now. Now, this is what I love to say. Look at that. 
So we've, we've got all the service history, everything that's been done on the car. Um, fantastic kind of provenance. Audi service schedule. Another thing I like to see, you, you, you get many, many cars that are, you know, people swap and change from uh, a dealer to dealer, but this is mostly been done at one garage. So here we go. Of course, if, if you can see a date there, you, you're better than I am, but what can you expect from a, an Audi main dealer? So whenever that was, 19,638 miles at a particular date, which is, we've probably got it in there. In fact, let me just see. 11th of the 8th, 2009, uh, we've got there. So we must have looked at the invoice to, to make sure. Uh, and then we've got 26th of the 8th, 2011, 36,405 miles again, Manchester Audi. You've got somebody who can actually, you know, just do three things and he's managed to get all three right instead of the guy here that only did two. 9th of the 8th, 2013 at 51,757 miles, H. Ballard and Son. 28th of the 7th, 2014, 59,878, H. Ballard and Son. And then 16th of the 11th, 2015, 67,380 miles, Granville Motors. 4th of the 8th, 2017, 75,637 miles, Granville Motors. 19th of the 2nd, 2018, 78,127, Granville Motors. Yeah, what <laughs> date over there now? 22nd of the 7th, 2019, 86,297 miles. Um, Granville Motors again, and then this last one, 30th of the 7th, 2020, 89,197 miles, Granville, uh, well, Granville Auto Centre. Well, they, they changed back there to Granville Auto Centre. So that's, that's it, great, great provenance, but as I say, all the, all the receipts. And I think, actually, I'm sure, at 59,878 miles, it uh, had the cam belt done as well. So, great car, we'll just get the fan on and the heat in. And it, again, proper, proper rotary switches. And the proper switches, which, that's how it should be in, in a car. I'll just put my seat forward a little bit. There we go. Air conditioning. This little button here puts the spoiler up and down. Um, let's just see. Just trying to find, there we go. Heated rear screen. That's to a quick clear. We're uh, being surrounded by sheep, so I need my wits about me here. See them in the mirror there watching me. Okay, windows are clear. Me sat here gabbing. And uh, wait. clear off. Don't run across the road. One of them, and I'm pretty sure it's the same one. He's getting braver and braver every day, and I'm, just, I'm sure it keeps sneaking up behind me and frightening me to death. But it's uh, one day it's just going to like uh, butt me. So a real proper sports car. Actually, I was right where I was before. 
That's it. So it's finished in silver. It's got the half leather and Alcantara seats. Mint inside, it's had over mats on from new. I'm going to put my lights on. He's a brave lad. Um, just, uh, <laughs> just been saved as well because I've got, uh, I got up here and just as I was coming around a, a long sweeping bend coming off at Lancaster, I just felt like the back end was moving across. Because you, you can feel, th these Audis, you, you can feel everything, you, you, you just, they're just brilliant. And I just felt like the back end moved a little bit too far. I got here, I, I always carry a tire, an inflator with me, because if you get stuck up here, you, you, you know, <laughs> in certain circumstances you could be dead as opposed before somebody found you um put my tire inflator on it eight pound pressure in the back tire um so must have picked up a, a puncture on the way up um it is slow it's still it's all right at the moment when i say on the way up it, it was checked over the other day and there was nothing wrong with the tire so uh between then and now the car the, the tires deflated to eight pounds there's no warning lights which should be standard on all cars they are uh, when you think about it your tires are the only thing that's <laughs> keeping you on the road really um, nothing else <laughs> they're your only connection to the road so uh, very very important you get your tire pressures right and keep them there anyway I happen to have my uh, pump on on me and they're uh, back to where they should be it's a lovely sports car and uh, really is timeless even even the old ones you see so many about and they all look like they're brand new I think they were made out of galvanized metal and made a big thing of it of course which Audi's did and to to their credit uh, say you, you never you never see a rusty Audi do you unless it's there's one that's had body work and been repaired by some animal. Just a, a great design dash. As I say, the, the rotary, you know, they say little things please little minds. Well, rotary controls. Oh, let's like see the doggy. The rotary controls with, if you can hear that. proper switches lovely aluminium brushed aluminium and uh, there's, there's matching trims on the door handles again good design there all nicely built all, all feels like really really nice materials and very very well made and it <coughs> steering wheel with nothing on <laughs> you know you get in the car and you don't feel like you're Lewis Hamilton and steering wheel should come off with you when you get out and switches all over the place I think that's why I get more enjoyment out of out of cars like this it's not so much distractions as it's just you 
driving, <laughs> um, you know, you, you're kind of more connected with your drive than you, you would normally be if, hard, hard to explain, I know. But <laughs> you, you feel more like kind of trying to <laughs> clip the apex of the bend when you're in something like this. You want to do better gear changes, smoother gear changes, coming into bends being the right gear. Be able to accelerate out. It's just a very, very fun car. And again, I, I say that these days automatics are so good. If I'm honest, they're not as much fun. I like the paddle shift ones, you know, you can come around a bend like that and change down using the paddle shift. But, the manual car, matching the revs, matching your speed, your steering inputs. You just feel like a better driver. Birds in the road. I actually don't think we're asking enough money for this car. Where are you going to find another one, one owner, in this condition with a full service history? Good colour combination, steering wheel and everything looks like it's done 20,000 miles, not 90. And it drives like it's done 20,000 miles. It's obviously not been hammered, well looked after. What can you get for six grand these days? You know, you look at old, old Maserat MX-5 and it's not because they're a classic or anything. And they're three and a half grand, four grand. And then you get a proper, well-built, vehicle that, w that will just last forever. So we've got uh, multi-spoke alloys even getting back to the when I think about this aircraft aluminium, I always remember the uh, the Audi TT fuel flap, and that's that's kind of a work of art. Big hinge on it. It's TT and uh, little electric switch here that I think they used to be under there. They used to be took right under the where the radio is and on the gear tunnel. As I remember, there were three switches. And the first time I jumped in one, of course, it's always a struggle to look for the, the fuel flap. And it was the same with this. I mean, it's, it's quite obvious, but my I've got my travel mug there and the petrol flap and the boot release is just there. So my, uh, my travel mug was obscuring it. And it's a while since I've been in one of these, so I, I and it, to be fair, it, it's, you know, like when you format a memory card, that's pretty much the same as my brain when I get out of a vehicle. As soon as I get out, it's reformatted and I've forgotten all about it. And then on to the next one. Now this will be nice going over here, but you know, it would be great if it was safe to go a little bit faster, because I'm really enjoying this car. But it's not. There's uh, too many sheep about, and it's uh, 
there's pheasants everywhere. Everything that makes the countryside so nice. Except for cyclists, they spoil it. <laughs> Just, just beautiful. And people like him spoil it way too fast. Look at the uh, the mist out there. Brave man. Always tends to be a lot of uh, pheasant around here. They must be rearing them just up here. sure he didn't just catch the wheel arch on the fence on, on the fence on the dry stone wall there I mean, this, this car is so lovely to drive. Normally I go back, because we're always struggling for time. It is only um, three minutes to nine at the moment, so. Um, but I go away in, on, on Sunday, and uh, as usual, the, the job has just gone incredibly busy. We've got so much to do. Um, I'm trying to get an interactive webcam set up as well before I go away. And um, so normally I would go back along the motorway, but there's pretty much all country roads back to Preston in this direction. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Country lanes all the way. Is that Heather? Purple stuff? My girlfriend didn't know. Sure, that must have only just come out unless I've <laughs> I can't I can't have been coming nearly every day for months and not noticed it before. Or can I?
So, I think uh, I'll finish the drive there. If you've got a boring works car, or you know, an estate car or something, and you want something fun for the weekend, or days off, then this is a great car for not a lot of money. And you could pay thousands and thousands of pounds more and still not get a car that drives better than this or is as much fun as this. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.